on the glitz and glamour of downtown Manama. We're gonna hang out with these protesters for a little bit. We venture into the dark side of Bahrain, a side the government tried to prevent us from seeing. gas is a regular occurrence here, suffocating the boys' chance. We smelled it ourselves. What is it? What is it? it uh, my eyes are burning. It feels like I shot a lemon in my eyes. And uh, you can feel it in your throat right now. Uh, it's hard to breathe. We're just a short drive from the United States Fifth Fleet Naval Base. So this is the tear gas that they've been using? This is it. It, 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 it hits uh, three pieces of tear gas comes from here. And these, I are these are them? No, this is another thing, either for the rubber bullet or for the tear gas, a different type of tear gas. Human rights advocates like Nabil Rajab say everyday security forces have also been shooting into neighborhoods with birdshot. He says striking unarmed civilians. People spray painted the names of the martyrs on the walls, but then it's been covered up with this white paint by the government. I mean, it's everywhere. He, he said already I removed around 40 from my body in the hospital. This Birdshot says that the, the police have been using this to shoot them. They're just little pellets that get in the body. But look what something that small can do. You see where he has them all over. They shoot it from very close distance, that's why it's been killing people. And this one, you can, with one shot, you can hit 20, 30 people at once. Right here, you can feel where the, some of the pellets are still in his body. Still in his body, because he's too scared to return to the hospital after the military took it over last month. So he got out of the hospital bed and ran away? Yeah, because he was afraid. He'd rather try to remove the pellets, one by one with a needle, than go back. Doctors and human rights organizations accuse security forces of using hospitals to identify, capture, and then torture protesters. Oh, you have rummy tea. Thank you. Thank you so much. Shokram. He said he took a razor blade on his own and, and cut the bullets out of his leg because he was too scared to go to the hospital. Because he says that the riot police came in and, and beat him while he was in his hospital bed, so he fled. And he still has the bullet in his eye. He can't see? He can't see. No. Oh my God, what happened to him? Sound bomb. A sound bomb? That's a literal translation in Arabic for what in English are called flashbang grenades. You have people wounded every day and you don't know how to deal with them. You don't know where to take them. Doctors are getting beaten, tortured inside the hospital. Nurses getting arrested and beaten inside the hospital. And it's really a humanitarian crisis we are going through now. Even ambulance drivers say they've become targets. This man says police open fire on his vehicle and then beat him up, breaking his leg. Bahrain's government gave us a packet of documents telling its side of the story, blaming Iran for instigating demonstrations and unrest. In one paragraph, they accuse activists of doctoring photos, fabricating injuries, and Bahrain's foreign minister says security forces are not firing on unarmed civilians. The police would not walk into a neighborhood and start shooting people. The police would be at the checkpoint or at the post. So they're not shooting into the neighborhoods right now? No, no, no. Bahraini officials also say that the overall situation in the country is calming down. But we saw people hiding in their homes. This whole place has been tear gassed. We heard gunshots in broad daylight. It seems security forces have contained the opposition in the villages, making it invisible to the rest of the world.